Well, Christy Woodson Harvey, thanks for coming by. I'm looking forward to visiting with you on North Carolina Book Watch about your new book, Lies and Other Acts of Love. Can you give us a little shorthand version of what the book's about? Absolutely. So Lies and Other Acts of Love is all about family secrets and the things that we do to protect the people that we love from the things that may hurt them um, and how those secrets tend to play out in our lives. So the premise of the story, it's written from the perspective of a grandmother and a granddaughter. Um, and they um, are having have sort of similarities in their lives, but Annabelle is, you know, she's very young, she's the granddaughter and she's 22 and she's sort of trying to figure out her life and her, her marriage and who she wants to be with for the rest of her life. And Lovey, of course, has this boatload of life experience and um, is now, you know, taking care of her husband who is an invalid. And so um, the stories play out sort of back and forth in time and um, parallel Annabelle's love story with Lovey's love story and then also in the present day of Annabelle's um, really deep connection and relationship with her grandmother. Well, well, um, you know, one of the things that's special about Lovey is that she's got not just one daughter, but she's got like five, five daughters, not too many grandchildren, but a lot of, uh, you know, it's the opposite of the way it works. Yeah. Sometimes these the, these five sisters have a role to play in your story. Oh, absolutely! The five sisters are a very important part of the story. Um, they are well. They are what the secret is centered around, first of all, um, and and are just they're they're the people who are always there for Annabelle, and they really shape her life. They are. Um, just kind of the influence on her. And she, she describes her grandparents as the invisible hand that have guided her through her life. But in a lot of ways, you know, her mother and her aunts do that as well. They're the people that she turns to for advice and guidance and um, who she really looks up to. And you can see through the story, you know, the advice that has trickled down from Lovey's mother all the way down to Annabelle. Well, well um, tell me just a little bit about Annabelle's choices in, in her, um, and, and choosing a husband. Well, Annabelle is engaged to, um, as, as I think she describes it, the man of her mother's dreams. You know, he is the perfect on paper guy and, and, and he's nice and he's likable and there's nothing like not to like about him except that she's not in love with him. <laughs> and so- Is she really not in love with him or is she love, in love with him in a different- I think in a different I, way. Uh -huh. I think she loves him, but, but she's, well, and she's young and she's scared and she sort of starts to think this is going to be the rest of my life is this, you know, good on paper person, but I'm not really sure that, you know, he's the love of my life. And so she sort of goes out in search of this like mad passion that, you know, can't live without you kind of love that you maybe and see on TV. It. And she finds it. <laughs> and is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, we'll have to read the book to find out. We'll have to read the book to find out. We'll have to read the book to find out. But, um, but yeah, but, but Annabelle's story and Lovey's story are very different. And they, it's, it's a bit of a juxtaposition between love and marriage today and love and marriage in the 40s and 50s and you know, what that commitment means to different people and, um, and how it plays out in their lives. The, the, the story set basically in current times, but it looks back, way back into the times um, around, starting back in the times around World War II, right. back in those times. Mm -hmm. And so um, to, to tell Lovey's story, did you have a tough time getting yourself back into times that you never lived in before? <laughs> well, I'd heard a lot of stories from the, that time because, you know, my grandparents did grow up in that time. And so I, I had a little bit of background information going in on, you know, maybe a little bit what I want to talk about. But it was definitely, I, um, I have a new respect for historical authors because even just the little bit that I did, it requires a lot of research, you know, plane flights that they're going on and where, you know, where they could go and where they would come from, just all those little minute details. But it was a lot of fun to get to do. You set your book in uh, Eastern North Carolina to start with. In fact, in the little town of Bath, which is maybe North Carolina's oldest town, but it's also not much of a town population-wise right. anymore. But why did you, why did you choose Bath? Well, I really. It didn't really matter what town it was, but I wanted it to be a very small Eastern North Carolina town where maybe there wasn't a lot going on at the time. Um, because I think a big part of, of Lovey and Dee Daddy's story is that they meet in this tiny little town where there aren't a lot of options, but yet they go out into the world and they still wind up together. And for me, that was a really critical part of the story is that, you know, just because they meet in this small town and, and there may not have been a lot of other choices didn't mean that they weren't really right for each other. In the uh, story winds up, uh, 
having a lot of action in Salisbury. Yes. And you have a connection to Salisbury? My hometown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Salisbury is where I grew up. And um, and it's it's a little bit, you know, part of the book is set there. Um, I will probably write more books in Salisbury because I loved growing up there and um, we'll want to explore that a little bit more. But, but I loved growing up there and I wanted it to play a part in this book. And it was really fun to get to write about my hometown. So you've had two books really published within a year, which is an extraordinary feat for a first time author to have two at a time now. What, what, can we look for more? Is, have you, is, is this it for we a hope while? We so. Um, well, my, you know, my third novel is um, under consideration right now. My, my editor really enjoyed it, so that's always a good step in the right direction. And um, I've actually finished the first draft of my fourth novel. I tried to get it wrapped up before I was going out on book tour again. So um, that's been a learning experience. It's kind of juggling the writing with the, with the touring and that kind well. of thing. Um, but I'm very excited about both of them. And just hope for good things for the future. Well, having read Lies and Other Acts of Love, I'm excited too, and I'm looking forward, as I said, to visiting with you on North Carolina Book Watch. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward to it as well.